Deckard6 here, and welcome back to Empire of the Sands. I'm recording this on the eve of the beta patch, and I'm going to talk about that a bit more later. But yeah, I'm sorry for leaving you so quickly last time, because my computer was in the slow process of crashing, probably due to my video drivers. They've been updated, but I'm not sure if that's actually going to fix the problem. We will see. At the very least, it hasn't crashed on me since then? But, you know, it loves crashing at the worst possible moments, like when I'm recording videos. But at least I actually was able to save the footage. So I'm coming back, and I'm sort of like, wait, what were we doing? And then I see that these guys exist, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's what we were doing. We were uh, taking these guys so we could complete a loop around here. Completely enclosing the Red Sea in our influence. Okay, Hejaz actually isn't really ours yet, if I recall. Yeah. But they're really darn close, and it's just like... We're in the final stages. I think I was building up some new... Yeah, I was expanding my military. I wanted to do... more... cannons? That's just a whole bunch of infantry, wow. Specifically, that's not great for us because... Muslim infantry isn't that great. Like, I don't have the chart in front of me, but if I recall, Muslim infantry is... if not the worst of the uh, main tech groups, it's pretty bad. I think even uh, Indian and Chinese infantry come ahead of ours. Now, we're allowed a, a larger percentage of cavalry than many tech groups, and our cavalry is really good, it's just really expensive, and as you can see, we can't afford to pay for an entirely cavalry army right now, or at least a bulk cavalry army. So our military expansion is going to have to be an infantry in the short term. Alright, let's get the thing going. I think we were, yeah, we're in the process of fabricating some claims here just so we can make maximum efficiency out of our... Uh, administrative points. You know, save us a 10%. So this is on the eve of the beta patch, and I'm just, I was deciding, do I want to wait until the beta patch comes out and update to that? And ultimately I decided no. I'm not going to update the beta patch in this game. I will either A, update to the beta when I move on to my next campaign, if it hasn't gone to a full patch by that point, or B, update it when it becomes a full patch and it's no longer a beta. So either new campaign or it goes full version. I just, I'm a little leery about weirdness of during updates screwing up my current campaign. I don't think we're actually going to send this extended military down to participate in this war. The, uh... What are they called? Supply limits! Yeah, supply limits are way too low here in the southern desert, particularly with our tech level, to be sending large armies around. I will, however, send them up to uh, Baghdad, because Iraq, the Levant, and Egypt proper have pretty high supply levels. It's places when you get to the Sinai, the Nubian Desert, and the Arabian Desert that are supply levels tank. Unfortunately, this also means our most valuable territory, some of our most valuable territories are where the enemy invaders are going to come. This means we don't have as much option for slash and burn and retreat as I would like. I mean, if we get into a desperate war with the Ottomans, what do we got here? I'll, I'll pay the prestige to save the points. If we get a desperate war with the Ottomans, I'm probably going to have to give up everything east of the Sinai if they manage to gain an initial foothold past these forts. And just burn the Sinai, blockade the strait, and force them through here. And that's the reason I'm seriously considering placing a fort somewhere in this area. Just to stop them and slow them down. Thinking it would have to be in the Sinai. This is Desert just has a development cost, doesn't have any defensiveness associated with it. Oh, I was waiting for those rebels. Alright, now that they're out of the way, we can probably move on to conquest. 
And we're actually losing money with our armies at full maintenance now. That's not... Oh, well, it might be because we're paying for the re reinforcements here. But still, our money situation is really tight. Ugh, I'm being a little laggy. I really hope my computer doesn't decide, Oh, you're recording again? Now's the time for our drivers to crash. I made sure I had plenty of free space and all kinds of stuff, so it shouldn't be any problem. But shouldn't and won't actually be a problem are two very different things. I'm going to slow down the speed just because that might help a little, particularly when we're actually... Oh, I forgot I... Oh, here's probably part of the reason why our maintenance is so bad. We still have our fleet of heavy ships. Wow, you're moving fast. I want to chase you down so you don't just pillage my stuff. There we go. Uh, we still have our fleet of heavy ships parked in the Red Sea. So we are paying full cost on the heavies. And heavies aren't cheap, yo. Why are you still moving? Eh, whatever. But yeah, heavies aren't cheap, so that's probably at least where part of our money's going. Okay, now we're making money again. And now we're losing money again. I guess it's going to be one of those periods of economic development. If I recall, we were looking at various ways to improve our economic development. We were considering uh, economic and religious as our next tech uh, idea groups. And I was really up in the air. Because they are, they have a lot of advantages to both of them. The Deus Wilt cause uh, cause Belly's nice. Actually, missionary strength would really help us secure stability modifier. Is a uh, stability cost modifier is a really good way to save administrative points in the long run. Particularly if you're hovering at this low stability like we are. And culture conversion is really nice when you start taking foreign culture provinces. There's a lot of nice things in religion, but let's face it, inflation reduction, uh, extra tax efficiency, those could be really important in the short term to jumpstart our economy. I'm still not 100% sure which one I'm going to take. I literally have been flip-flopping back and forth. Like As soon as I start leaning toward one, I'm like, oh, well, there are so many advantages. You know, like, we want to save points as much as we can in the early game, so obviously religion's better. And I think objectively, like, assuming we can survive in the short term and we don't end up needing that money to hold off an Ottoman invasion or something, I think religion is the better long term. Because we're not going to be doing that much development of our provinces. Lead. Or are we? No, we're Muslim tech group, and we're a little behind on tech in general, I think. So we're probably not. Let's just check some of the European levels. Yeah, Europe's a good solid two levels ahead of us. We're probably not going to be spending points on development in the short term. So I'm thinking the point saving associated with religious might be the better option. Because there's some serious advantage to the point saving that comes with economic, too. Development cost reduction. But I don't think we're going to be actually making use of that that much until probably the 18th century. We're still gobbling up a lot of land. I mean, look at Africa here. All of this is still valid to be conquered. We can, we'll be spending administrative points probably coring all of this. At some point, we're going to be spending diplomatic points annexing all of you. We're probably going to have to annex AQ next and soon. I really like their buffer state status. The problem is they're horde and they're not reforming their government. And horde units just cross over at the end of the 16th century from amazing to bad. They start off the game with really some of the strongest units. Hell, objectively, I think, not even arguably, objectively, the strongest cavalry at the start of the game. Probably equivalent to many groups Tier 3 Cavalry. But... We're on our Tier 3 Cavalry, I think. Let's show out to your types. Yeah, we're on... No, we're on... Yeah, we're on Tier 3 Cavalry. So, we're at the point where we're on par with our Cavalry. And probably... You know, we have the worst infantry probably in the... May have the major tech groups... So we're probably at least on par with Horde uh, infantry at this point, if not ahead. So it's 
about time to get rid of them. Anything else we can do here to milk out a little extra prestige? Uh, give up claims in the Mamelukes will give us a couple extra prestige. I think that's all we want. Alright. Diddaloo! Excellent. Core these up. And they're wrong culture, wrong religion. Another advantage to that religion tech group is it will allow us to start possibly assimilating the Nubian uh, cultures. I'll leave you down here to maintain order, and I'll probably bring you up to the Levant. Because that's... If something seriously bad is going to happen, it's probably going to come through uh, Iraq or the Levant. Probably the Levant, because, hey, look who borders there. Now, I'm really glad that Ottomans have been busy with other wars. The thing is, they've mostly been winning those wars, and have expanded themselves pretty historically and pretty effectively. They've gotten up through Bosnia, they've taken Wallachia, they're securing themselves in the Caucasus. Oh. An ally with Tiberistan also limits my ability to extend in the Caucasus. So, they're expanding, which means, you know, they're going to be a bigger threat whenever I eventually do fight them. Azerbaijani is a different cultural group than Kurdish, so it's not worth feeding to my vassal. The hodgepodge of cultures in this region makes it hard to create good, contiguous vassals. If I recall, our next planned uh, conquest, after we'd secured this little strip of land down here just to make troop movements easier, was to fight against Persia, who actually has a fair number of allies. Some of them are quite powerful, or at least potentially. Crimea is not bad. They're not super strong, but they're not bad. And Chagadi apparently is the horde that is currently gobbling things up. But remember what I said about hordes. Uh, pretty soon, their unit types are just going to fall off. So, these Crimean and uh, Chagatai units are probably around... Let's see, when did we get our new units? It was 14 for cavalry, and oh, it looks like a 12 for infantry. So yeah, probably by... Our next tier of cavalry and infantry, we will surpass the quality of uh, nomadic units. Which also means, AQ, I'm going to start improving relations with you because your time has come. You've been a really nice buffer state. You are a nice way to, you know, feed all these Kur uh, Kurdish provinces to. But your units are just going to fall off, and you're not going to be able to bring the same presence to the battlefield that I'd like. You're also going to be on the front line and unable to defend yourself, so you're probably going to get just rolled over by someone coming in. So it's going to be the end of AQ, I think. Uh, we can convert. Our piety is awful, and that really sort of leaves us the question now... Do we want to raise our piety up, or do we want to go secular for a while? I mean, lower tech costs and higher tax modifier are really good. And as long as you can keep your religious unity up, and your morale isn't that bad, I kind of like it. I mean, it seems like piety, high piety is better for an actively expansive state. Particularly if you're lacking the development, uh, the government development with things like lots of idea groups to raise your morale, raise your efficiency of converting or your uh, religious tolerance. So that's really good, but later game or if you're in a period of peace, I think low piety is better because tech cost reduction is really good and Tax power is really good. Manpower becomes really uh, important. Hmm. 
I, I'm looking at when do we want to actually... Because this first point of defensive is really good. Extra military tradition is a really important bonus. But I really want this military tax, and I really want these new units. So I don't think we're going to grab it right away. Huh. Wasn't expecting a rebellion here. Yeah, I guess we did integrate them fairly recently. And we still have a fair amount of just rebellion chance throughout our realms, and we have a little bit of overextension at the moment. Our income's just not great. Right, I was going to park you someplace, and... This is our shipyard, right? Right. So I can park you in here, mothball you, and be able to repair you fairly quickly. So let's mothball you. That'll save us a little money. Uh, how about these guys? These guys are already mothballed. Excellent. Ah, getting a drink of water. Throat's been a bit parched recently. And suddenly doing all this talking is aggravating it. Let's see. We also want Hormuz. That means possibly having to confront the Persian navy. Which isn't bad. It's not super great, though. We have heavy ships. Because there are some... This is an inland sea that they're going to be maintaining. But there isn't a whole lot of inland sea. Like, there's four, two provinces here, and there's two provinces here that are inland sea. The rest of these are open seas provinces. Yeah, so heavy ships will be more important in the long run. Okay, sale of titles. Now, I've been talking about our economy, so you, you'd think the... Gold would be the first choice. Nope. I'm going to boost stability. Actually, how long is these over? Alright, I'm going to wait. I'm going to let the event sit here until these finish. Because they'll be done within a month, and this should stay up for three months. Then I will boost stability to get as low cost as I can. Save an extra 9%, big whoop, but why not? Why not save it when it doesn't cost me anything to save it? To do. All right. Then boost stability with points. Then take the stability bonus here. That will give us a significant boost to our tax rate, and will possibly help uh, keep some of these rebellions down. Or totally not, because the rebellion chance in these areas are just so huge. Whatever. It'll improve our tax rate. It'll potentially help keep order. I like the stability. I like keep my stability generally at about two if I can swing it. I mean, I'll go for three if I get events that raise my stability. But that's not entirely plausible. Like, you, you're just dependent on random events to get that to three. And it's generally not worth the points. So I'm just going to leave it at 2 for now, and being able to get that more expensive second level through an event is nice. Stop tempting me! I keep seeing that up there, and I'm like, ooh, I can get an idea. No, I want to finish this tech first. And we don't have anything that's super important in our national ideas. There we go. Tech group, or not tech group, unit group, and... Extra... I don't want these outdated units anymore. QQ and the Timurods are fighting. Big whoop. There's just a lot of mess in this area. While people are sorting out who owns what. Don't like Tabaristan growing, particularly considering they're an ally of the Ottomans. I think they're likely to like try to claim my land and then use their Ottoman alliance to butt in. Not like the Ottomans need an excuse... To fight me, they have claims like, yeah, they, they took the, the mission that lets them get claims on the whole Levant, so they have plenty of reason to fight me. What do they have to? They're up, yeah, unfortunately, it seems like Tabaristan is the one pulling them into wars right now, and just keeping them busy and killing their men. I'm okay with this. Our manpower is about middle level, but it means I don't want to start any potentially major wars at the moment. 
Minor wars, fine. I don't, but I don't want to challenge Persia at the moment. Now Persia is fighting in Afghanistan. I mean, it's a, it makes sense for them. It's all part of their culture group. This whole area is something they want to expand into. If I were Persia, I'd be doing the exact same thing. All right, another min tech level gets us close to being able to make, finally having to make that choice between administrative and economic. Improved diplomatic reputation would help with the speed of integration and would probably be enough to make Ajaz join us now. So let's grab that. Yep, yeah, but I need to improve relations with you. So that's pretty good. That will also clear up one of our relation slots. Because so right now our relations are pretty full. We have Yemen, we have Jaws, we have AQ, and we have Cyprus, which still has not ended up with a female ruler or regency. And I really wish I had like an assassination option of some variety. But considering the power of personal unions in this game, that would definitely be imbalanced. When I saw Austria and Poland not rivaling each other, I figured there must have been some major power shift, but no, no. They, they roughly seem the same they would. No, it's. Barbant has specifically increased its strength, which has made it shift the rivals around. Death of a bishop? What is this? Oh, apparently they're asking for a patriarch of Constantinople from a significant Christian minority. Hmm. I don't see a reason to immediately antagonize Ethiopia. It's not immediately on my conquest list. Not since they dropped off our uh, rival list. So I'm just going to let that matter go. Who were our rivals again? Oh, we have an empty slot. Let me guess, Ethiopia could be on that list, and I just have it happen. No, Spain and France. Ugh. Hmm. Well, who's rivaling us? Spain's rivaling us, and I see no reason to antagonize France. Though we have a fairly powerful Spain this time. They got Naples, and they've sort of... They've got a fairly strong Italian presence. Though I'm kind of digging this big Milan. I'd really like them to be able to see them form the Kingdom of Italy. And they got France backing them up? Here's the predicted rebellion. Or one of the rebellions. At least they're all separate little groups, so they're not going to be any huge multi-province rebellions. Now oh, that was dealt with nice and easy. Where can we invest this money to get good returns? We already have... Let's see. You might be worth investing in. And you should already have all this stuff. Yep, yep. Uh, Damascus. It's probably worth building a workshop in Damascus, I think. Iron is a fairly valuable trade good that becomes more valuable later on. I'd love to build a... What's it called? Barracks here as well. Because manpower is the thing we lack. A temple here might not be a bad idea. Ooh, here's another tough choice. Let, let's do a quick comparison. Temple is... 2.3 workshop is also 2.3 but the value of silk goes up there's an event later that raises the value of silk so the actual value of this event will go up later so let's build the workshop
Oh, we lost a claim on this. I guess we're going to have to reform it, but right now we're... Uh, our diplomats are a little busy. Though you can stop improving relations with you. And, uh, let's, all right, let's do the vassalization here real quick while we have the free diplomat. Bing. And that annex you. This will take five-ish years. Hmm, we don't have a lot of diplo points, do we? Partly because our king isn't that diplomatic. You know, with zero in diplomacy is sort of like, nope, not a smooth talker. Though with the rebellion having recently happened here, I can probably disable this fort. Save a little couple bucks there. Or spice provinces. I almost tempted to put uh, workshops in there, but the actual production value is very low here. So not going to give me a whole lot. Let's see, protect our brethren. Yeah, we're not going immediately into Africa again. All right, here's the other. Let's grab one of our generals to go help with this. Here's another rebellion that I've been waiting on. One of our advisors has died. No wonder we're making money. We're not paying for an advisor. I mean, fort defense is fine. We mainly just need the military points, as far as I can tell. No one wants to work. Well, neither do I, but you see me here anyway. I don't like the quality of that guy as general. Was he... Mar oh, yeah, he's actually going to bother Ethiopia. Possibly save me a little time and effort. No, guys, you don't need to stack up on me. Seriously. I, I got this. Uh, the beta patch. Alright, so I mentioned I was going to talk about the beta patch. Beta patch has a lot of good changes. It sort of smooths out the growth curve on development. Making it far more practical to develop provinces. Um... It gets rid of unrivaled attrition, which you might or may not have heard of. Damn it. Oh, I rolled crap. Not like I rolled good on the second one. Yeah. Both of these. All right, I'll take the tradition, because. I don't want to lose either of those. Probably should have checked our armor tradition to see how much we'd actually lose. We're at zero, so maybe we didn't even lose a full ten. Our prestige and army tradition are kind of hurting at the moment. Where was I? All right, no on arrival attrition. Smoother growth curve for de uh, development. Uh, fixed a lot of the AI t uh, little bugaboos, like the AI just stacking up when huge stacks to do sieges, because they're only thinking about their own armies and not as much about other people's armies. So allies and vassals would screw up their uh, attrition calculations but trying to decide whether or not they should stack up in a province. Little things like that would help out a fair amount, but as I said, I'm worried about weirdness developing from uh, applying a patch to an already existing game. I like to start new games with the new patches. And we're about a quarter of the way done with this. Give or take. This is a very peaceful episode, too. We had, a, we had a war, but it was really a, guess what, your land is ours now, march in 30,000 men, and acquire territory. Our main expansion this episode is going to be uh, with the Kurds. And there's the question, are they going to be a large enough group to become accepted? I really don't think so. I'm looking at their uh, development of their provinces, and they're not bad. Well, some of them are. I consider anything below a 10 pretty bad. And this one's got a 4. Uh, but then again, a lot of ours are pretty bad, too. But our... You know, if... The, uh... uh Mashriq Arabs of uh, Iraq 
aren't accepted, I seriously doubt the Kurds are going to get accepted. Because this is probably one of the largest culture groups we have. Good grief. More rebels. And I knew I knew there's a whole bunch of rebellions coming, but man, they just keep coming. And it's sort of like pausing our manpower progress. We're not really losing a whole lot of men to these. But we're losing just enough men that we're really not gaining that much manpower. And as I said, I specifically want to wait until our manpower is fairly full before fighting Persia. Though Persia is just deciding they're like, I want to fight everybody. Because they have a lot of good stuff to expand into. But that might exhaust their military. Let's check. I really like a search bar here. Arumba recently did a video where he was talking about things he'd like to see, and having a search bar was definitely one that I agree with. Let's see, so let's look at Persia. 18, only 18,000 men, and their manpower is fairly low. The thing is, they still have a whole bunch of allies. So if I was just fighting Persia, I wouldn't give a rat's patoot. I'd definitely go and start that war. But I'm not sure how much power their allies are going to bring. And that makes me nervous. I could, probably could do I look it up and see exactly how many men like Chagadi have and Crimea have. But I think it's the whole coalition of them together are just going to be a bit too much for me to deal with. Even with my vassals backing me up. Maybe, you know, once these, once all these rebellions are done happening... You know what? I'm going to actually convert some of these. Uh, once all these rebellions are done happening, uh, once my manpower's back up, I'm not going to be that reluctant to attack them. Like, I'm still nervous about Ottoman stepping back. Ooh! <laughs> oh, yeah! Ottomans fight France. Now, I have no idea if their troops are actually going to reach each other to fight... But Ottoman and France butting heads? That's the... You know, two of the uh, biggest boys on the block are just beating the crap out of each other. It's an Ottoman... Of, yeah, it's an Ottoman landing on England. Well, that's a thing that happened. Uh, one of the other things they were talking about fixing the patch, or at least changing, I'm not sure if it qualifies to fix, but they're readjusting the calculations AI make for amphibious landings against allies in... Um, hostile, you know, you know, uh, enemy allies in wars. So Ottomans will be less likely to land on England and more likely to land on France. Now well, the Ottoman invasion of England does not appear to be going well, which is something good for me. Let's take a second and just look at the total forces: Ming, top, France. I have more active men than the Ottomans. And the Ottomans has a lot of money and a lot of manpower to replace this, significantly more than I do. Which suggests that their sudden drop is due to the failure of their invasion of uh, England. Still, that means the Ottomans are not going to be thinking about beating on me. This drastically raises the odds that I'm going to be going after Persia. I want at least that province. I'd also love to have per a Persian vassal, but it doesn't look really practical. There really isn't a good tag. Well, maybe there is. What was the nation here? No, I'm... All right, I gotta wait for the autosave. There we go. Uh, Tiberistan? No, not, not Tiberistan over here. Oh. That is Tiberistan. Tiberistan, what the hell are you... Hold on, I might be confused. Wasn't there a Masrandi culture tag here? Is that Tiberistan? That is Tiberistan. Alright, um... Well, there goes that idea. 
My initial idea was, oh, I'll go release this uh, Masradi culture tag and use them as a vassal and then feed them Persian stuff and just create a huge vassal out here. Well, no, Tiberistan has gone like, well, we lost Persia, let's go conquer the Caucasus, and backed up with the Ottomans, they have gobbled up a large chunk of the Caucasus, and... <sighs> I wish I could use their tag. Uh, Khorashani is a possibility. There doesn't appear to be a Khorashan. Yeah, I could I could use the Khorashani tag for a Persian vassal. That's something to think about. Though they're likely to be Shia, I think, because of the way uh, vassal tags work these days. I don't need to be improving relations with you anymore. Stop. I need to be fabricating claims on you. This is province. There we go. So this, uh, Khuzestan and Hormuz are the two provinces I really want out of Persia. Hmm. I don't like spending administrative points, but I really don't think we can afford to lose legitimacy at the moment. Like, once it starts falling below 75, I really start feeling like the it doesn't actually mean penalties, but you're really losing a lot of bonuses. The diplomatic reputation, all the na national unrest, and the national unrest that comes from the tolerance all start adding up if you start falling really low in legitimacy. Also, I have no problem grabbing you now. Get our military tradition back up after I was just complaining that it was completely in this shitter. Get some passive just growth on our tradition before we go to war. You always just think about, you know, the generals, but it also raises your morale by a fair amount. And we're gonna need those generals. <laughs> I don't want to have to recruit the uh, zero army tradition generals. Holy crap! And our our military is ready to go again, basically. It's just our military tradition, the actual leadership of our armies is. Ah, oh. see what we got here. Oof. Oof. I can't afford to pay any of you, and do I pay him and hope that I get somebody less? Well, we could really use those Diplo points. We have a zero... We're almost done annexing you, though. You can't see, but I'm tapping my fingers on my desk just trying... just considering where best to spend our money. And I think just a general lack of decision is going to make me decide not to re-roll our guys at the moment. The thing is, when you don't have money, you're reluctant to re-roll because you need that money elsewhere. We might need it for mercenaries, we can use it for investing in infrastructure. What do we have here? We already have a temple here. Yeah, we already have a temple here. Uh, we can invest in infrastructure, we can hire mercenaries. It's a great defensive buffer. I think we've got infrastructure buildings in most places we want. Ooh, a 6-6 six, six that I didn't notice. So that's probably going to get a temple at the very least. Yeah. We're going to build a temple here. We don't get a conquest of Jerusalem, or Al-Quds as we call it, do we? Let's look at our triggered modifiers real quick. Oh, we already have a conquest of Jerusalem. It just doesn't show as a... Right, It's it used to be like a thing on the province. That you just conquer the province, and this is a passive bonus that comes from owning the province. All right, I'll look at your stuff later. Hold on a second. Talk about triggered modifiers. But now it's here under triggered modifiers. And let's take a second to look at these. Western arms trade, technology cost is really good. Uh, not a subject nation... A Western technology group is either allied or reputation 150. It might be worth looking to see if we can find a sugar mama in the West. Oh, neighboring country. Well, that doesn't do us any good. Conquest of Rome. It would be nice to go there, but not immediately pro uh, something we can do. Custodian of the Holy Cities. This is going to happen, just not right away. East Indian trade route. 
requires that we have exploration for Quest of the New World, and we, and we have to be a technology group Western. So I don't think that's going to be happening. It's not a time soon. So let's look at what we happened from AQ. We got a couple of forts in this area. I kind of wouldn't mind getting rid of a fort in Baghdad if there's someplace better to put it. Because Baghdad has a lot of value. Oh, that's something we haven't developed. We haven't developed Baghdad. Let's not workshop. Uh, let's get the temple going in there. These are This fort's good. This fort's good. I like them where they are. This is, this is a highland fort on the border with the Ottomans. Yeah. A plus. Uh, drylands. I'd rather move it into the mountains. I like mountain forts. They're expensive. Actually, no, they don't have the increased production cost in mountains, do they? No. Development cost, but not construction cost. Maybe it's only like... Hmm, maybe it's only like jungle that has increased construction cost. Anyway. But that defensiveness is really handy. So I might end up at some point moving the fort in the mountains, rather like when I get access to tier 2 or tier 3 forts, I might just tear this one down and build one here. This one's really awkwardly positioned because we already have a fort in Baghdad, but it's a border fort in the mountains. That's gen that's a good place for it, generally. It's just we already have a fort in Baghdad. I'm, I'm considering other good places to layer out our forts. Because Baghdad covers so many provinces in its zone of control. But this is not going to cover that many provinces for us at the moment, but is really strong for its position and defensiveness related to our enemies. I might eventually, to optimize my forts, move this fort to here and move Baghdad's fort to here. And I think that might be a better layout in the long run. But right now, with A, money on the, the money tight, B, planning an invasion, so I want the forts going soon, like, I want them able to be activated when I go to war. I'm not going to do that now. I'm just letting you know that I've thought about these fort positions, and I think this is the more optimal alignment of those forts. But for the time being, I don't feel like it's worth tearing down any of these forts. Alright, that, that topic's over. Uh, can I support the units or reassign... I do have the force on it, and this is free construction. I might reassign some of these units to other... We have a 6-7, we have a 5-8, and we have a 11-7. Right. Uh, this actually didn't end up the way I wanted to. My units are imbalanced! Ah! And this is probably not the most efficient way to move them. No. But this is the way that my brain works. You should be going there, so we have a 582. Good. And then I will send you and four of you down to reinforce this army, bringing it up to a 20 with the right balance of men. Uh, and I might just send the remaining two to work with the African army and just buff it up a little bit. Just make use of all the units that are already constructed. And that should be a good way to make use of them. Keep checking to see if I get a cheaper uh, Diplo Advisor. Alright, once these armies are resorted, you know why I'm even munching you all the way down there? Uh, bring you up to Baghdad and send you to Baghdad. We're preparing for war, aren't we? Yeah, I think, uh, do I have that guy work on Hormuz yet? I've already finished. Alright, so with the annexation of AQ and the completion of our claims, and Ottomans still being in this war with France, England... I think Genoa is what started the war. Yeah, they're, they're taking this province from Genoa. But France is fighting. The Ottomans are super busy. They're not going to be interfering. I think it's time to take the war to Persia. We're going to be taking at least this province. 
and we're taking at least this province. We might take this one just because it's there. It's, you know, pretty borders and all that. And we might see about doing something with the Kiva tag and Pos or Koroshan. Kiva's up here, Koroshan's down here. Uh, Koroshan tag and a Persian vassal. I spent a lot of time theory crafting this video. But next next video is where the action is gonna come related to this theory crafting. So this has been Deckard 6, signing off. <laughs>